we're looking at design. We're looking at a personality crystal, right? That's sitting on top of the head. And then we have a design crystal. And then we have the magnetic monopole, everything holding it together. And when it comes to soul, we're talking about personality crystal that incarnates over and over again. Some people, maybe not incarnated before, but carrying genetic memory. So that would be what we call soul, unborn, undying, ever-present, always incarnating with the same base, so the same entry frequency of its life experience, life after life. Okay, so now spirit. The nodes of the moon is our path in this life, where we be, okay, and how we see, where's my pen? How we see is our nodes of the moon. When you have nodes of the moon that are not connected consistently to definition, like me, I'm going to pull me up because there we have an example. It can become much easier for the life in its spirit of its expression of what's going on in its life. The spirit can be broken. When we say spirit can be broken, we're talking about the person's nodes because it's in undefined centers like this. It's deeply dependent on other people to activate where I be and how I see. So that's spirit. Okay. Another way that Ra defines spirit is the essence of your signature. So the access to the spirit in this life for me as a projector is success. For you guys that are generative, it would be satisfaction. For manifestors, it would be peace. For the reflector, it would be surprise. Okay? When it comes to mind, we have a personality who is the observer of this life movie. It is everything that you are consciously aware of and obsess about and contemplate and you identify with as I. I think, therefore, I am this stuff. Okay? That's the observer observe that's what's observing the body in human design the body is the life the body is the only thing that lives once because when it uh decarnates when the design crystal and the magnetic monopole reunite and they exit the body that crystal goes back into the mol molten core of the earth it goes back down into the earth and gets recycled. So you have this body, body is the life, is born once, never gets another life again. This body is what is observed, okay? It's much easier to identify with this stuff. If you're like someone like me who unconscious, this is my body, here's my life, I have a definition, I'm inspirational. Or not. <laughs> that is my life. And what's watching this life is this right here. So we have the observer, the observed, and the process of observation between the observer and observed is this right here. Your body graph is the map that shows you what you're experiencing, expressing, learning, being, doing in this life. That's the process of observation. So now when we talk about mind, the mind process itself, again, going back up to head ashna, we can see, we can know that it's all about conversing. It's about processing. It's about analyzing. It's about witnessing. It's not about doing necessarily. There's no motors attached directly to mind. Mind is here to commune. That's what it's here for. What is it like to be me observing this life? And our seven-centered homogenized consciousness gets us stuck in, well, we have to control, we have to manipulate, we have to make all this, these plans and have all of this mental stuff express outside in our reality. We have to, must, should, all this energy that makes us think, I control, manipulate my own reality. I have free will and all this stuff. So that's all that pressure that's going up here, left over from the development of Ajna. And you might remember from the video I sent you why the Ashna is the key to waking up is because the Ashna contains the pituitaries, their master glands. 
Every single center is hooked into that master gland through hormones, through chemistry, chemicals. Can you control how much endorphins you have in your body at this moment? Or how angry you get when you think, you think, you think, this is the thing. Everywhere in the openness, your mind is sensitive to distortion because you're thinking about this and it's inconsistent. You're amplifying and you think you know what's actually going on out here but not really, not if you're trying to make a decision about yourself. There's so much distortion. You have no idea how much distortion you live in. That's why there's no choice because it's there. So going back to what is mind? Mind is built on openness. In human design, the conditioned mind, conditioned mind, conditioning, conditioned mind, is built on openness. So we're not only talking about head ashna anymore. We're talking about these conditioning receptors, these dormant potential activations that are manipulating you to identify with whatever it is that it's here to learn about as a reason for making a decision. So somebody comes in with that gate activation and now we have power struggles. We have power trips. We have domination and submission. We have power over and power under instead of power with because that's the dynamic I'm here to learn about in this life in specificity in relationships. Do I have a choice not to learn about power and control and helplessness? No, because that's my Venus. That is an aspect of me. Me as in the me that's learning, conditioned mind, learning about life. And that's why we have no choice. We can't erase that gate. We can't cut off our Venus or any other activation that's in an undefined function. Is everyone following? Questions? I have no questions, Levine. I just love the way you explain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really, thank you for that. You're welcome. And do I have a choice to explain that way? No. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm abstract. I'm doing the best that I can with what I have. And, you know, what, with what's going on in the transits right now. So mind. We have small mind. Okay, I'm going to call this small mind as in consciousness, the I that thinks I am. <laughs> the I that thinks, therefore it thinks it thinks I am. Then we have the being. This is what we be. Yeah, this is the life. Life. Be life. Be your life. This is your life that you'll be. Now, all of us will have a different design. It will be inconsistent. It will be very defined. It really depends on your design. So you will have more of the consistency of the life to watch when you have a lot of definition like this. Now, can you really watch it with your mind, small mind, small I? Not necessarily until it pops out and you get to witness it over and over and over again. Somebody recognizes, oh my God, Amy, I love the way that you talk so visually and I can really see what you're saying. I can see what you mean. I literally see what you mean when you're talking because you have a specific way of conversing with your beliefs and your thinking. And can that's- I ask a question? Sorry. Please, yeah, go ahead. Yes, what is the small mind? So is it the personality? That you call the small mind. That's what I'm, right. that's what I, I, you know, this, by the way, the way that I'm teaching this right now, I didn't hear ever hear Ross say small mind. I'm just trying mm -hmm. to differentiate it from that greater witness consciousness that I know is there mm -hmm. that can help mm -hmm. you guys recognize when you're not stuck in only small, narrow perceptual mind that you think you are. Mm -hmm. So I call it uh, observer. I haven't ever had Ra tell me that this is the, uh, well, not specifically as in the observer observed. This is mm -hmm. just what I'm digesting and, and helping you to get you to understand the difference between the two. And I'm calling it small M so that you, and, and that's where I was headed to, disassociate from this as the only thing that you think your life is about and see the process of observation the totality of your life experience in partnership with the universe. Big M, big M. And why I say that is because in these beautiful, precious 
moments of lucidity and clarity, you don't identify with the small M. You can step back and be the big M that is a part of totality and surrender to the fact that a other person in your life is just another aspect of you in its differentiated process so that we can have this dance we call Maya. Did that make sense? Because mm -hmm. when, you can, when you can let go of the, and this is me learning from my experience, the power over, the domination submission, instead of having, trying to control and manipulate reality just to let go and surrender to what life is asking of you, there's a lot less frustration, anger, bitterness, disappointment. There's a lot more ease and flow if you can go with what's happening. Just what is actually happening in this moment? Yes, I might feel frustrated. That's okay. That's what's actually happening. But is that coming from small M? And if, it's, if you're watching it with big M, with the overall observer witness consciousness, you can navigate. If you're stuck in small M, you might get so overwhelmed with the bitterness, burnout, frustration, anger, distortion, that you go off on your, for me, childlike temper tantrums because I get transferred from a third color desire leader motivator to innocence innocence like a little kid that is not taking responsibility for her emotions and for the actions that have happened that have led her to be all emotional and maybe blaming shaming guilting faulting 